Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Today in History. And the news I have to share is a very sad one. Today in History, um, April 5th, 2013, over 60 people died in a ghastly multiple crash on the Benin Oro Expressway. They were burned to death in a fatal multiple accident that involved a trailer an oil tanker and a luxury bus. This accident, like I said earlier, occurred on the Benin Oro Expressway and it caused a very heavy gridlock, you know, and people were stranded on the dual carriageway for several hours. The passengers of the luxury bus who were rescued were rushed to a nearby hospital and they were badly burnt. The driver of the trailer, uh, his assistant a and 57 passengers in the luxury bus were among the dead. Witnesses say the accident occurred at about 1.30 p.m. when a trailer loaded with cement reportedly had a burst tire and it rammed into a patrol tanker carrying fuel, which hit the fully loaded luxury bus. An official of the Federal Road Safety Commission, FRC, explains that the trailer was, you know, coming from Lagos, while the tanker and the luxury bus were said to be traveling in the opposite direction. Only three people were rescued from this accident that occurred today in history. Oh, it's a lot. It's a lot to, to take in um, since 2013, and that is, what, eight years ago. Um, you, you know, you would expect that, you know, those families maybe would have healed, but, you know, by now, you know, but 60 people is a lot to lose in one day. And, you know, and this really just, you know, is another reminder that every day that you wake up in Nigeria and you go to sleep, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you should be grateful and mm -hmm. thankful because you can never really tell, you know, what sure. type of accident could have occurred in that day. You know, I'm sure that some of these people, you know, said their prayers in the morning and went out, you know, and, you know, and, you, know you just would not be expecting you know, this type of thing mm -hmm. to happen. Um, it also, of course, you know, might be a good day to create those questions about how safe are, um, you know, our roads these days, um, how safe are the tires that people use and their vehicles, how safe are, are some of the vehicles that we see plying, you know, the roads. But, you know, at the end, you know, you still would just say it's, it was an accident. Um, you know, no, no matter how much blame goes around, you know, it wouldn't bring back those lives. But, mm -hmm. you know, also, you know, to remind everyone that's, you know, it, it, it's not the FRSC being stubborn when they ask you for, you know, your spare tires and they ask you, you know, to show you some of the things that are very you know, necessary to keep you safe, you know, roadworthiness of the vehicles. There's a lot of, you know, government vehicles that are not even roadworthy, but, you know, they're still on the road. You know, it still doesn't stop them from asking those questions. And um, rest in peace to those lives. And, of course, our condolences go out to their family. Uh, April 5th, 2013. Um, once again, 60 people lost their lives. All right, I'm also going to be talking of a, a sad story. And, and now I'm talking of, you know, a, another example of where fame eventually leads to suicide. Kurt Cobain was his, or is his name, and he was one of the most famous uh, band members, you know, many, many years ago, in the 90s, actually. Um, it was on this day that he committed suicide in the year 1994. He initially had, you know, problem with drug abuse and, you know, alcohol and all of that, um, you know, before this day. And of course, there was, there's, there's a point that he actually even went into rehab, checked himself into rehab, and then, you know, left the rehabilitation center without telling anyone. He was missing for a while, was eventually found, you know, and a uh, you know, day after he was found by private investigators when he killed himself. Um, it was a rock icon. Um, and on this day, he killed himself, you know, in his home in, in Seattle, Washington. Three days later, he was found by an electrician who was installing a security system in the house. His downward spiral began taking shape, you know, uh, in Italy the previous month uh, when people noticed that he went into a coma uh, and nearly died after mixing champagne and a drug, uh, Rofinol. Uh, he, of course, now continued with the drug problem. His friends and family knew that he had a drug problem and he continued to spin out of control. When they attempted to intervene, Cobain mostly ignored their concer concerns and reluctantly checked into the rehabilitation center I spoke about earlier. On the 30th of March, just a couple of days before this, he walked away from rehab without informing friends or family members or anything. And his wife, Love, her name was Love, then um, um, got a private investigator to help find him. Uh, he was eventually found uh, somewhere in Seattle, but refused to return back to Los Angeles. And it was a couple of days after this, you know, that he got a gun 
from his friend. He convinced his friend to buy him a gun, and that was the end. Uh, he, of course, left a suicide note that ended by saying, it's better to burn out than to fade away. So this might also be Kurt Cobain's dealing with the fact that um, you know, fame had hit him in a way that he probably couldn't um, handle it, couldn't manage. And you know, he, he also maybe didn't think that it was going to be you know, around for, for so long. And so he decided to end it a lot faster than you know, people had imagined. Um, so yes, rest in peace to him. Uh, there's a lot of other people who have also gone down this path, you know, and struggled with depression, struggled with you know fame, struggled with you know not being so, as popular as they were maybe a couple of years ago, and not being able to handle it. You know, went into drugs, um, you know, alcohol, and all of that. Eventually, lost their lives. Whitney Houston is one person that we, you know people would always remember. Um, that maybe also one of the most popular uh, persons who, of course, you know, went down that path and eventually lost her life. So. Oof, but with specific, uh, you know, relevance to committing suicides by people who seem to have it all, people you look up to and say, I want to be like this person. I mean, remember Anthony Bourdain, the yes. American chef, author, television personality, reportedly hung himself in 2018. Lots of other footballers, actresses. Robin Williams also. You know, it's just so sad. I wish we could actually get a glimpse of what these people might have been going through or if they had just shared their stories because we never can rationalize this why would someone who seemed to have everything so people you look up to people you want to model yourself after they seem to have it all finances love career and then you hear in the news that they hung themselves shot themselves it's just so it really sad. just also tells you that um, when people say money is not everything, it's you know it's examples like this that you know they they point to you know that you might have all the money in the world and all right. the fame in the world you know but you don't have the happiness that you seek you know and then you know when that sadness creeps in, there's no amount of you know money that would change it. Um, sure. You know it, it definitely and maybe it also even helps make it worse um, when you when you are dealing with that level of depression or unhappiness. So um, yes, money is not everything. I would like to have a lot of it. Um, but, you know, also quickly remind, you know, everyone that money uh, isn't everything. everything is yeah, I still want a lot. Living, I want, I want you know. Very prudent life. Yes. Uh, I still want a lot of it. Humble. It's better to say money is not everything for my Bentley <laughs> than to say money is not everything stuck in traffic uh, <laughs> in a BRT in Lagos. Anyway. <laughs> no shade if you use a BRT. Please <laughs> no, no use shade. a BRT. All right. That's all we have for you today in history. 1994 and the year 2013, both really sad stories, but yay, we're alive and of course kicking this morning. 5th of April, let's get straight into our first major conversation for today. And that comes up right after this short break here on The Breakfast.